So what are the big takeaways from last night's event? David Plouffe served as President Obama's 2008 campaign manager and later as a senior advisor to President Obama. He's with me now. Great to see you, David. So what was your, what was your biggest takeaway? Well, the debate really was about, for Hillary Clinton, I think, trying to win undecided voters as it was for Donald Trump, and I think she needed to provide more enthusiasm for the so-called Obama coalition. I think she did those things. I mean, the first 15 minutes or so I think were fine for Trump. After that, it was a disaster. I mean, I've been through good debates and bad debates. The question for me really is... And you're is, open about the fact that Barack Obama had a very bad debate, yes. that first debate against Romney. And we were honest about that externally and internally. Mm -hmm. By the way, the Bush campaign was in 04, too, when they had the first bad debate of Kerry. The thing I'd worry about if I'm a Republican is if Trump actually believes he did well, and is not going to adjust. And if he brings into that town hall meeting what he did uh, here in New York, it's going to be a disaster. I mean, it was one of the worst debates I think a major party nominee has had, and, and really raised questions about his fitness and his temperament. Oddly, he talked about that. Um, and so, and there's also a lot of things coming out of the debate. Alicia Machado, him saying it's uh, smart not to pay taxes. The former Universe. Right. Uh, his Iraq craziness about call Sean Hannity and confirm <laughs> I was against it. So there was a lot of things that will live on uh, in the next couple of weeks. So who was the target? So she needed to energize her base, but who was the target? Like who are they both fighting for over in that debate? Well, I think there are undecided voters, true undecided voters. Um, and I think it's hard for, I don't think Trump lost any vote last night, mm -hmm. but he's in a position in the race where he has to add vote. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think undecided voters, they're not all going to make the decision overnight, but I think she solidified and helped herself. Here's then she's also got, you know, younger voters, voters that might be thinking about Gary Johnson. It's very important that she converts some of those. Here's what Newt Gingrich came, a big, you know, surrogate for Trump. He came out and said he, he's sickened by the intellectual dishonesty, arrogance, and smugness of the so-called intellectual yet idiots, talking about how she's got this Ivy League polish and arrogance with smoothness, but he's the one who appeals to real people who are out there suffering. Is there any truth to that? I mean, that's just a bizarre statement. Newt's off his rocker. I generally respect what he has to say. So, listen, Trump's going to get 42, 43, 44. Or any Republican nominee is going to get that. The problem is, to win the presidency, uh, maybe in this election you only need to get the 48, let's say, in battleground states, because the third parties are going to get some vote. Uh, no, absolutely not. And his 30-year thing, I'm sure that'll be part of the next debate. Uh, and, you know, mm -hmm. I'd put her record up, Secretary of State, Senator, First Lady of Arkansas and, the, and of the country, versus what I think she exposed last night, not paying taxes. I mean, he basically admitted he doesn't pay taxes. Well, certainly for those two years that wound up in that one publicly pretty, released pretty audit. pretty proud of his, his smart approach on How taxes. How smart it was. But right. I have to ask you this, because we've been watch, watching the polls, as I know you have, right. and although David doesn't pay as much attention to these polls that we all look at. He looks at some other secret information that we don't have access to. <laughs> and uh, it's been seriously tightening. I mean, in Colorado, the CNN poll yesterday shows uh, he's at 42, she's at 41. She had an 11-point lead on him. Pennsylvania, she's at 45. He's at 44. She had an 11 point lead there. And so it really looks like this race is tightening and could swing his way in the last six weeks. No? Well, I think, first of all, there's going to be a poll every day for whatever your view on the race is. I mean, there was a national poll by NBC yesterday uh, that had her up seven nationally, which is the margin we beat McCain by. So none of these polls look at 100% of the vote that's going to happen on Election Day. And when you look at that, I think she's got more to gain. I think she'll do better with undecideds. She'll pull off some of the Johnson-Stein vote. And I think Trump's coming up against the ceiling. So a poll that says something's 42-40, even if it's right, even if that's the firm choice, what about the other 18? So most of the polls this time, mm -hmm. after the first debate in 2012, had Romney winning nationally, uh, had the states tightening. Uh, but what we were able to see through good data and good analytics was a presidential year turnout uh, very much to our liking. So I think she's got a decisive edge in the electoral college. Uh, Pennsylvania, to me, you don't even need to look at analytics. She's going to have too big a margin coming out of Philadelphia and the surrounding suburban counties for him to make you that up. You say no way does he win Pennsylvania. No way. Wow. How about no Florida? Way. I think she's got the edge in Florida, the edge in North Carolina, edge in New Hampshire, edge in Nevada. I think she's going to Ohio and Iowa, too, but those are the two where Trump's doing the best. There's no question about that. Uh, and I think they're Where do you put the best. odds now of a, of a Hillary Clinton victory at? I say 100 percent, which I know people think is crazy. But I've been through this a couple of times, and you look at how do you get to 270 electoral votes. The other thing I'd say, it's going to sound partisan, but I, this is what I believe. The quality of the candidate matters. This is not someone, I think, who's got the temperament or the fitness for office to get a winning number in a presidential race. He's got passion and supporters, uh, and that's important. But he doesn't have the ability because the quality of the candidate. Listen, Hillary Clinton has her challenges as a candidate. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. her, her favorable numbers aren't where we like. The passion isn't quite where we like yet. But when you compare the two of them, and I think that's what came away last night, was somebody, even if you don't agree with much of what she said, seemed presidential. 
throughout the whole debate. And Trump, particularly in the latter half of the debate, became a little bit unhinged and unmoored. You're going to be hearing from some of those passionate supporters on Twitter in five, four. <laughs> it's always a joy. <laughs> it's a joy having you here. Thanks for coming. Thanks. <laughs>